Okay, all right, so let's get started. We can see that we've got most people here. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, smart workspaces, which is a new element in the smart learning suite uh, software. But um, let's have a look at the things that we're going to be learning about today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to recap on our smart learning suite and smart learning suite online. We're going to look at what is smart workspaces, how does workspaces work and how do I set one up? And then we're going to talk about real classroom experiences. I'm going to take you through um, a way to create uh, a lesson, upload it to the cloud and then create a workspace. And then what's coming in, uh, in the future for workspaces. Workspaces is in beta phase and so there may be um, new upgrades coming um, at the end of August and by the end of the year. Oops. Okay. So to have a look at smart vision is basically to have our teachers creating their lessons on their desktop with the software, being able to, so that's step one, and then we send that lesson that we've created to our smart cloud. That's my um, terrible attempt at a smart cloud. So that's our step two. Now we can access the cloud from the board or we can send directly to the board should we like. But if we're sending it to the cloud and we're accessing from the cloud, it allows every single student that we have with whatever internet enabled device that they have to interact with our teacher, each other and the board. So just to have a little look here, our, if we're looking at the boards themselves and your boards won't have this, they won't look like this, they'll actually look like um, the white screen with the three hands, the touch right erase. But any update that's coming in August, your boards will actually start to look like this, which is pretty awesome. You'll have the Smart Cap app, which is the whiteboard uh, little green uh, app there. You'll have the browser, which is our blue one. You'll have Notebook Player, which is our uh, the app that we're able to go into the lobby here and run the lessons from the board, or you'll be able to run the lessons from your phone. And then we have screen sharing. With the new update, we'll have customizable wallpapers. So you'll actually be able to choose a wallpaper for your board, which is pretty exciting. You can put your school logo up if you've got open days. However, I love it to um, take photos of my students' work and have work of the day or work of the week displayed as our wallpaper, or even student of the day or student of the week to celebrate our students and their work. And then finally, I use it as a talking piece. So if we're doing an activity on the Great Barrier Reef, I might have a really beautiful picture of the Great Barrier Reef one day to start the discussion about the Great Barrier Reef. And then maybe uh, a photo of bleached reef, uh, the bleached reef or pollution in the environment to, just, to start those discussions around environmentalism and sustainability. Um, we have the new feature called the App Store, which is down here. And what we can do is, is not actually apps there, frequently visited websites, things like Prodigy Maths and uh, Code.org and Class Dojo. And what we can do is simply go into this tab here, start the websites that we want, and they show up here in uh, these tabs here and sit on our desktop, which is really great for teachers that want to use Class Dojo or, or, or activities such as that. They have one click access to those. Um, the other thing that's coming is a user personalization, which means teachers can log into the board and all of these preferences will follow them, which will be great for specialized teachers or teachers that don't uh, teach in one classroom all the time. Um, or if you've got bookable spaces and you have smart boards in there. So you'll be able to go in, log in and have all of your preferences sitting on your board ready for you to go. And the final upgrade is that we'll have multi-device dual wireless screen sharing, which means from any device, Apple, Android, uh, Chrome and Windows can all screen share to the board and you can have two of them sharing at the same time and toggle between the both of them. So if you have students doing some incredible work that you'd like the other students to have a look at or give feedback on, you can ask them to share it to the board and compare and contrast each of their work or even just celebrate their work and um, motivate other students to, to replicate those sorts of things. Then we move over into the software. The software is the Smart Learning Suite and we call it SLS for short. In there we have four elements and I do apologise for my writing. Um, our first one is Smart Notebook and that's where we build our lessons. 
Our second element is smart lab, and that's gamification. I'm gonna take you through these step by step so that you're able to see them. Our third element is smart response, which is where we can create formative and summative assessments. And our final and brand new element is workspaces, which is a digital um, online collaboration for students to, to um, co-create co and collaborate anywhere and anytime. So if we look at each element individually, most people will understand and know and use Smart Notebook. That's where we build our lessons and those lessons could be specific focuses such as a maths focus on time or they could be a whole term focus. So our forces unit in science for the entire term. So you could have week one right through to week 10 and you could have all of your content in that one workflow. Smart Lab is where we gamify content. So we take content um, and for example, it could be uh, um, grammar. So we could take nouns and we could gamify that content. So we might be looking at pronouns, proper nouns and common nouns, and we might wanna turn that into a game that our students can play. Um, the, the games will give you continuous and instant feedback for the students. So if they get it wrong, it will bounce out and they're able to readjust and reassess. Um, it encourages collaboration, communication, cooperation, problem solving, persistence, and critical and creative thinking. And they're very, very easy to create. Our third element is smart response and that's a really powerful tool for our teachers. So it's a quick and effective formative and summative assessment. Teachers pop in their content, their questions, whether it be multiple choice, short answer, um, uh, identify the answers and then push that assessment out to our students. Now you can do that as a pre-assessment to find out prior knowledge and then you can adjust your teaching according to where your students have come back in those results or you can do it as a summative assessment and you can see where the growth has been with your students and what students you need to, to um, focus on again. And then our final one that we're looking at today in depth is Smart Workspaces. And Smart Workspaces is a, a digital workspace for students to create and collaborate on a shared workspace anywhere, anytime from any device. So how do they fit together? Because it does get quite complicated if um, you're not actually using it. It's very simple to use and really easy to use. However, um, trying to visualize how it all goes together might be a little bit complicated. So I'm trying to break it down into a little bit of a workflow um, and, uh, and stop me and ask me any questions if you like in the chat uh, pod. So our first step is here's our teacher at home working on their notebook. So they're creating in notebook, they're creating their lessons. They want to con uh, gamify some of their content and so they use this smart lab tab to create games. And so I'll just show you what that looks like. You can choose your game, add your content, press finish and your game's there. Then at the end or at the beginning to assess our students' prior knowledge, teachers will pop in a smart response. And a smart response is up here in the tab and you can see smart response and it'll come up with what type of question and then you write your question in and then it'll ask you for your answers and so on and so forth. After that, once our lesson has been created, what we are going to do is we're going to take our whole lesson that's finished and created. Oops, sorry, now I'm moving them around. And we're gonna upload it to the cloud. Now this is what my visual of the cloud looks like. There's lots of rainbows and colorful and sparkly. So here's our lesson uploaded to the cloud. I have my notebook with my class lab and my responses in there. Once it's in, I can then choose pages to turn into collaborative workspaces. And so I'm going to take you through that process right now. So this is what a workspace can look like. Here's my students here. I know I've got 22 students and we'll walk through this in a minute. We have our editing tabs here. This is the digital workspace that the students will be working into. Um, it's a collaborative activity, activity and it's 
enabling you to have whole class or even small group collaboration. Now that small group does not need to be just the students in your class. You can actually have small groups that are made up of students from your class, the neighbouring class, a high school, a class in a different state or even a class in a different country. As long as they are logged into your class lab number or your hellosmart.com number, then they are involved in that digital workspace. And you can see how that could be really powerful for, say, a class down here in Melbourne where I'm at, working with a class up in Cairns on a Great Barrier Reef um, project where they're building knowledge or even a geography uh, um, workspace. So this is the workflow and we're about to do one live together. So you can start with a blog page or a teacher created template such as an important page. So you can start with a notebook page that you've created in notebook or a PowerPoint page or a PDF that you've already got and we can turn that into a workspace. What we need to do is select the page, we turn it into a collaborative workspace and then once we run that workspace it will actually assess how many students you've got in there and ask you how many teams you would like to make. Now, this group had 22 students and this teacher chose to make nine groups. And you can see down here, when I move down a little bit, down here, that we've got our nine groups. Well, that's a beautiful circle. Each group has all students populated in there automatically. Myself as a teacher can take the students out and move them into groups. You're not stuck with the students in those groups where they've been automatically populated. You can actually take them out and decide what students are in each group. So you have full control of who's doing what where. Once you take these and you press this blue button down here called Start Workspaces, it will actually push it out to the students' devices, whatever they are, iPad, laptops, uh, Chromebooks, Androids, whatever they have that's internet enabled and they have used to join your class in Smart Learning Suite Online. Um, and then that's their view. So they can start working and collaborating in those digital spaces. This is what the teacher desktop looks like. This is their dashboard and it gives you access to every single workspace there. So you can see the nine workspaces there that have been mirrored over here. And I can click into each of those workspaces to see what each of those groups are up to and what they're doing. And I can actually go in and collaborate with them. So maybe I can add questions to stimulate um, conversation or I can give guidance or I can bring a group's um, work up and say, I love the way that this group has colour coded their information. See how John has um, done his habitat research in green and Genevieve has done her um, life cycles research uh, in purple and they're collaborating in that one space. Um, you can use that as a learning experience. So let's have a look at how to make one live. So I have started a workspaces demo notebook which I'm going to open up and I've just put in a picture of Crystal, our um, our smart notebook monster. And what we can do is I can start adding a page. I can add a smart lab activity. And I might quickly just add one so that you can see it. So this is notebook. I'm in notebook software at the moment. I've gone into my class lab activity and I've, I'm gonna add a rank and order. And just for ease, I'm going to give them numbers that they have to put in order. I can tell them to rank instantly, rank when prompted, or don't check at all. I want them to instantly check because I want them to be able to play this independently without my supervision. I'm going to have Crystal because let's keep the theme. And with the click of a button, there's my game. I can push that directly out to my students, but I'm not going to right now. I want to add it to Smart Learning online. I'm going to add another page and I'm going to quickly show you response. Response is sitting up here. I'm going to add a response. It's going to come up and ask me to ask questions. So I might say, what shape has three sides and three? 
and we'll say triangle. Oh my gosh. And square. I can actually move the answers around so you're not stuck with the first one at the top. I'm only going to have one question. And there's my smart response. So I've used all three elements of the software on my device. So in Smart Learning Suite, I have used Notebook to create a workflow. In the second page, I've used Smart Lab, which is my gamification element. And then on page three, at the end of my lesson, I've used Smart Response. Now, normally, obviously, your workflow would be a lot longer, but for our purposes today, I'm just gonna keep it nice and short. And we're gonna save it. And we'll save it as Workspace Pro 2 onto our desktop so it's nice and easy to get to. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Chrome. I'm going to type in suite.smarttech.com. This is where you'll find your smart learning suite online. And with your activation, you have a login to this. It automatically populates with your, with your activation or your license. And I'm already logged in. So this is my smart learning suite online. And you can see my some of my lessons are here already. So to upload these, I'll go to my desktop, find my workspaces that I want, drag and drop. I can also press the green button and press add. And we're just going to let it update. It might take a little bit to update or upload, sorry, and import. And this is great because it frees up space on your laptop. You don't have to carry around a USB. It's all there in the cloud, all accessible via the internet. And you can actually access it via the browser on your board. So you don't even need a device tethered to your board to be able to use this or to be able to demonstrate your lessons. Okay, and you can see my lessons here. Now I'm going to go into this lesson. And if, if you would like, you can join me um, in this lesson and I'll show you exactly how to do that in a second. I just want to show you that there's my lesson here and I can run it from this board should I like. I can annotate over the top if I want, um, rub it out so that you don't have to. Uh, I can run my gains from here. I can press start or if I push this out to you, you can actually um, move through the gains autonomously. So you don't have to wait for me to start the lesson. You can actually choose to play them as, as students um, in your own time, which is a really great way to differentiate the learning. So if I know where my students are, if I've done a smart response and I've identified which students are where, say if I'm doing time and I'm in year two, I want to do a smart response based on o'clock half past, quarter to quarter past and then uh, random times and time lapse and I can grade, uh, group my students into those that know o'clock half past, those that understand quarter to quarter past and those that are beyond that. I can create games for each groups, uh, each group of them and they can work through those games without me being on top of them and starting those games. So that way all students are working at their level at the same time and then I can, as the teacher, go and focus on the students that need assistance or need extension. And then if we go to the third page, you can see there's my smart response and I can again run it from the board. Now, I want to make this page a workspace. I want to be able to put my students into a group really quickly and see if they can together come up with as many 2D shapes as possible. So I'm gonna go back to home and I'm gonna go press this pencil button. Now this pencil button will take me into editing. You can't create as much here in um, Smart Learning Suite online as you can in Notebook. So it's very limited. I can add an assessment and I can add an activity, but I can't add um, an extra page and I can't add photos and typing and writing currently. But I'm on the page that I want, I can see there's my page there, I can edit it and change it. Here's my response. But this is the page I want to convert into an activity. And you can see this button down here that says convert to activity. Now, I can have two options. One, I can make it a handout for my students. So it's an individual activity that each student can do. Um, if it's a PDF that you want our students to, your students to do that you've already got, you can make it an independent handout. They can complete it 
um, on their iPad or their device, take a screenshot and share it to Seesaw if that's your sharing platform uh, and you can use it to assess, which is great. Or they can take a screenshot and add it into the shout it out at the end of the lesson so you can talk about their solutions and the work that they've done. Or today, I actually want you to work into a collaborative workspace. So I've turned it into a collaborative workspace. I can preview it if I want. This is what workspace looks like when you've created one. I'm going to go back to home and then I'm going to run my lesson again. So if you want to join me in um, hellosmart.com, all you have to do is on your browser, you can go to hellosmart.com and you can type in my ID, which is 101106. And I'm just going to do it so you can see um, how easy it is. I think we've got one person in there already, which is awesome. So hellosmart.com. We're going to start this lesson. I can see that I've got Crystal already in there, which is awesome. Uh, mine's just taking, mine's updating currently. I'm just uploading, we'll see how I go. Um, if we get any more, I'll restart the activity. But for today's purpose, here we go. I am in, sorry, just waiting for my phone to go. All right, so let's start for the class. And what it'll do is it'll say, okay, you've got two students in here now. Now I've got three, good on you, everyone. Thanks, Ryan, thanks, Bex, that's me. <laughs> All right, so I've got, how many teams would you like? I might go with, I might go with two teams. So it's gonna populate uh, my teams into the workspace. I can go, oh, I think I might take Ryan and put him in with Beck, or I might leave Ryan and Crystal, they'll work great together. And then I'm gonna start the workspaces. So what my individual students will see is uh, a blank page and I'll show you what they'll see. So we're in Crystal and Ryan's workspace at the moment. Now on their devices, depending on whether they're on a phone or on um, a laptop, they'll be able to see three little dots over here in the um, workspaces. Thank you to Ben who has just joined me. Because I've started the workspace, it probably won't let me go back in. So we can just do that again if we want. I can come out so that Ben can join. We want to be inclusive. Let's let everyone in. Thank you for joining everyone. That's awesome. It's just uploading now. You'll get a little sign on your phone that says your teacher has started. You just have to press the button, got it. All right, let's go with two teams this time. We've got Beck and Ryan and Crystal and Ben. Awesome. We're going to start the activity. Okay, so everyone will now have a workspace on their device, whatever device you're using. So when you're looking at your device, you'll have a white screen and I can already see one of my friends writing test. You can hit the three dots and it'll give you a pencil, it'll give you a rubber and it'll give you the option to put a photo in. Now I can collaborate with my team here and I can draw happy smiley faces and they, we can add photos, um, 2D shapes, let's see what they've got. And my students can add photos, they can take photos to, to add them. So I might even cheat and put, uh, I'm actually working in the wrong workspace, I'm working in yours as the teacher. So we can toggle out if I want. I can go up here, awesome work. Awesome work, Crystal and Ben. And poor Ryan has, there's Ryan's. He's um, got me and his team. I haven't actually added anything. So I'll go ahead and do something quickly via my phone. And I'm gonna add a hexagon in, which should come in shortly. And a smiley face. So you can see that we're all, all, all over the country already. I'm in Melbourne, I know Crystal's up in Sydney. Uh, ben and Ryan, I'd love to know if you can tell me where you are in the chat pod. That would be awesome so we can demonstrate whereabouts in the country we all are. And we're all collaborating in this space. So you can see how powerful it can really be in the classroom. Um, so I'm going to toggle out of that now. And you can have as many workspaces as you need to accommodate however many students you have. Thank you so much for, for um, participating in that live demo, uh, Ryan and Ben. That was awesome. And Crystal, you are amazing. I'm going to head out of that now and it'll close you off. And we're going to go back to our slides. 
Okay, so here's an example of one which you've already seen, but I use this in, a, in my classroom. This is a problem solving one. My students were looking at uh, the fish, problem solving fish. So they had to F underline in red what the question was asking them to find, um, circle in blue what the, what the information uh, the question was giving us, and then uh, the strategy that we were looking at was making a list. And so my students together in their collaborative groups were circling the information, underlining the red find, they were using the drawing to make their list. So you can see um, that the brown barbaloots were only allowed to eat a red, blue, green or yellow fruit and they were only allowed to use two. So they decided to do red and green, red and blue, red and yellow. And then they did green with blue, green with yellow, and then blue with yellow. So they figured out that the amount of combinations that they could have was six. So I had some students that didn't give me their worded answers. I had some students that just wrote six and didn't do the demonstration. And so when I pulled this up and said, wow, look at this, this is incredible. Look at the workspace that, um, that Ben and Jack are in. Um, other students started to go, oh, I need to make sure that I need to do my worded answer. I need to make sure I draw my lines. I need to annotate on, on the questions. And it was a really powerful learning experience. And what we did at the end was I got them to screenshot their um, solutions and then we used a shout it out to compare everybody's um, answers, which was really interesting because a few people had done it very differently. This is another example of a uh, Great Barrier Reef. So students went in to the workspaces, they had learnt the whole entire term about Great Barrier Reef and the problem that's happening and they had, um, they were learning about the pink coral and the green fish and then they were building that in Minecraft and then their teacher went in and um, killed the fish and bleached the reef which was horrific and then they started talking about well this is actually happening, how are we going to stop it. Um, the students went off and did their research and then in these workspaces they came up with ideas on how they were going to um, um, help the situation. So you can see that students have been doing drawings and uploaded them. They've decided that they're going to have no more plastic lunch boxes. They're not going to have plastic in their lunch boxes and there's their rules for the lunch uh, playground. So they were all um, um, coming up with ideas on how they were going to do that. And I think this one was for their whole school demonstration. So you can see that they decided that they want to show the school um, the crown of thorn starfish that is bleaching the reef. So um, some of them had asked marine biologists about how we can make the water clean in Kirka, which is awesome. And, and so that's a few world uh, real classroom experiences and examples that we've seen being used in workspaces. So if you've got any questions pop them in the chat pod and I might throw to Crystal to see if we do have any questions currently. Hi Beck, we've got a question here from Alison. Alison's wanting to know if uh, workspaces will include student mapping um, so that you can identify each student's contribution to the workspace. Yep, great question. And and that is something that AMP had and definitely something that's coming in the updates for workspaces. So there's a couple of things that are coming currently that we don't have access to now because we're in beta phase. So it's constantly improving. And once it's fully released at the end of the year, workspaces is going to have um, uh, student mapping so you're able to identify the contribution of each student in that workspace so um, whatever the students are uh, contributing to that workspace you'll be able to identify and assess if you need to and they're also going to have the ability to type in there which currently we don't have so in beta phase um, so they're going to be able to have that that space to be able to work in and type and it it also zooms in and zooms out, so it becomes um, sort of an infinite workspace. They can zoom in as small as they want and add information. So it becomes a really workable space for them. Great question, thank you. Any other questions that we've got? I've got one more question here from Ben. Um, he'd like to know if Workspaces is available for Apple Macs and laptops, PCs. Absolutely. 
Yeah, Ben, um, great question. All devices, internet enabled, as long as they're internet enabled and they can log in to um, Class Lab, so just the way you you did. I joined from my Apple phone. I think Crystal's got an Android phone. Um, uh, I've, they can log in with laptops. Any device that they have, as long as it's internet enabled, can join and collaborate on there. Fantastic. That's it for questions, Beck. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Um, if you have any questions, I know I'm going to pop my email in um, underneath in the um, section underneath of this YouTube that we're, we're going to post on YouTube. But if you um, want to scan the QR code or see our um, Instagram handle, Helen is um, our ANZ Education um, Solution Specialist and I am an Education Solution Specialist and we're on Instagram and we're constantly putting tips and tricks and real classroom examples of teachers using Smart Notebook Class Lab response and workspaces in their classroom. So if you want to see anything like that, um, definitely jump online and um, follow us there or send us any questions via email or LinkedIn. We'd love to, to hear from you and see what you're doing with workspaces and the Smart Learning Suite and Smart Learning Suite online. Thanks for joining us, joining us everyone.